Hello, welcome to Calvary Chapel of Hamilton Sunday School. My name's Miss Val and I'll be teaching the lesson this week. Now I know you boys and girls are already ready with your Bibles, but you know what? I need you to get a special thing for me today. I have my special helpers here. Eli, Francesca, hold up the penny for me. There you go. Would you guys do me a favor? Now you can stop the video right here or you can always yell, Mom, I need a penny for the Miss Val Sunday School lesson. Either way works. But we're going to take our penny and I want you to put it right next to your Bible for me. Can you do that? All right, good job. My little helpers are gonna put their pennies down. Now you know our lesson this week is going to be in the book of Acts. Now, Eli and Francesca, they're not going to say anything. Shh. They're just going to point. I'm going to hold up my Old Testament, New Testament. I'm not going to look because I don't want to see. Okay, guys, point. The book of Acts is in the... Don't say anything. Everybody at home. I know you know. Where did you guys point? New Testament, that's right. The book of Acts is in the New Testament. And you know, we've been working on how the books of the Bible are broke down. And in the New Testament, we have the first four books of the New Testament are called what, guys? The Gospel. The Gospel. You know what Gospel means? That means good news. And that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what's the very next book? That's right. We're going to be in Acts chapter 13. And today, we're going to learn about some very important people. But you know what? This Sunday is the first Sunday in May. And that means we're starting a new unit, which means we're going to have a new verse. I'm going to share with that you later. And we have a new text truth. Francesca, hold it up. It is Tell About Jesus. Mm-hmm. That can mean a lot of different things, don't you, don't you think? So guess what? We're going to look in Acts chapter 13, and we're going to find out just what it means to tell about Jesus. More importantly, we're going to talk about who was telling about Jesus. So if you look in verse 2 of chapter 13, I'm going to have Eli hold up our paper for us this week. And this is... Paul and Barnabas. And our lesson this week is going to be Paul and Barnabas. And what are they doing, Francesca? They're telling about Jesus. So in verse 2, let me set the scene for you. So last week, Miss Brenda talked about the Holy Spirit coming down. He's our helper. And so the people in Antioch, through the Holy Spirit, were praying on what they needed to do. And so the Holy Spirit told them, and we're going to read that in verse 2, that as the Holy Spirit was ministering to them, and they were ministering to the people, he says, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul, who is Paul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Hmm. What work do you think they called them to? I bet you it's tell about Jesus. That's right. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So we have Paul and Barnabas. See that ship in the background? They sent them away. And Paul and Barnabas went to Cyprus first, and then they went to Salamis. And they knew that God had commanded them to tell about Jesus. Now, hmm, what is it do you think they should have been telling the people about Jesus? We're going to find that out. But Paul and Barnabas went to the synagogue. And at Salamis, they were telling the people all about Jesus. And then they said, that's a good job. We need to go somewhere else. And so they went to Pappas. And while they were in Pappas, they taught in the synagogue. But while they were there, they met two men. One was a false teacher. And he was telling people all fa false. 
on truths. That's what false means. He was not telling the truth about what Jesus had done. And another man was a leader in the city, and he was excited to find out what Paul and Barnabas had to say about Jesus. So as, they, as, Paul, as Paul was teaching, this false teacher started to stir up the crowd and started to distract them. And Paul said, we can't have that. They need to learn about Jesus, and we're telling about Jesus. So Paul said, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are going to be made blind. And this man was made blind. And the other man, the leader of the city, he was astonished. And he said, I want to know more about your God. So Paul and Barnabas told this man, and his city was so excited. Paul and Barnabas said, we're not done yet. We need to keep moving. And so they went to Pisidian Antioch, and they taught in the synagogue there. And they were telling all the people in the synagogue. Now the people that went to the synagogue were just the Jews. They were the only ones allowed in. So Paul says, you know what? I'm going to tell you everything that Jesus has done for you and what God has done for you. He has taken you out of Egypt. He has left you free from slavery. He led you and fed you in the, in the wilderness. He took you to the promised land. He made you a nation. He got you kings. And you just keep mumbling and grumbling. And you know what the best thing God did for you? He sent Jesus. And he sent Jesus because he loved you and I so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross. But guess what? He didn't stay dead. He rose again. And he went back up to heaven. And all we have to do is ask him to forgive us of our sins because that's why Jesus died for us, because of our sins. And so Paul was telling these people in the synagogue, and they were getting so excited. But guess what? Our mumbling and a grumbling Jews and the leaders said, you know what? We can't have Paul and Barnabas telling us about these Jesus. So you know what? The leaders started to stir up the crowd. And the next week when Paul and Barnabas went to go teach in the synagogue, the Gentiles started to come and listen too. And Paul got angry with the leaders of the Jewish people in the synagogue and said, guess what? Because you're not listening, because you're trying to keep us from telling these people about Jesus, we're now going to take the good news to the Gentiles. And guess what? The Gentiles then got to hear about Jesus too. And guess what? If you are not Jewish by birth, you are a Gentile, which means I is one, which means you is one too. And isn't that great that God wants to share his love for us too. So let's see now. We have Paul and Barnabas. And they've traveled to a couple of different places, didn't they? And what were they doing? They were telling about Jesus, weren't they? So you know what? I've got this big letter here. It's my big letter W. So I don't know if you guys have ever watched Sesame Street, but I just want to say today's lesson is brought to you by the letter W. Now, W, we ask ourselves a couple of questions, especially when we're going to tell about Jesus. Who was telling about Jesus? Who was telling about Jesus, Eli? Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas. Do you think they're the only people who ever told about Jesus? I don't think so. And where were they telling about Jesus? They traveled to all different places. This is just the beginning of their journey. They went to Cyprus and Patmos and Salamis and Pisidian Antioch. And then they continued on their journey. And what is it they were doing? They were telling people about Jesus. And what were they telling about Jesus? They were telling everybody how much Jesus loved them, loved them so much that because of their sin, he would die on the cross for them and he would raise again. And all we have to do is confess that sin and ask Jesus to come into our hearts. And guess what? That means we then get to tell about Jesus. And you're saying to yourself, well, where? That's our big W. Where do we get to tell about Jesus? And why do we get to tell about Jesus? 
Well, that leads us to our unit verse for the month of May. And why? It's because God commands us to. And where is wherever you are. And our Bible verse for the month of May is also found in the book of Acts. And it is Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Remember, if Jesus lives in your heart, the Holy Spirit is your helper. And you shall be witnesses. You shall be. That means not when you feel like it. God has commanded you. You shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That means how little you travel. Because right now we're not going too far, are we? Or how great a distance you can travel. You are commanded to tell people about Jesus. Isn't that great? Because you know what? If Jesus lives in your heart, somebody had to tell you, didn't they? Just like your Sunday school teachers or your moms or dads or somebody. And you get a chance to maybe tell somebody. Maybe you can call up one of your friends that might not know and ask them how they're doing. Or you might send a card to somebody and see how they're doing. So I'm going to leave our verse down here. And remember, it's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Now, hold up your pennies, guys. Remember I asked you to get a penny? You see this necklace I'm wearing? It has a penny on you. Now, you know, we have already lost our penny. Please pick up our penny. We need our penny. The value of a penny is what, everybody? You know it. It is one cent. And a missionary is one cent. And where are they sent to? Everywhere they go. And what are they sent to do? Tell about Jesus. Eli, pick up our little basket here. As you can see, I am wearing a necklace. And I have put my penny on it. And I took a little piece of cardstock and I just cut it out in a circle and I glued it on here. And I have got some Primacord. So our craft for this week is something very exciting <gasps> because you get to use your imagination on just how you want to do it. So you see here, I have made a cardstock heart. You can put your penny right on your heart. It's a cross, not a heart. Oh, I'm sorry. See, it's a good thing I have Eli here to help me. On our cross, I was just seeing if you were paying attention. We put our penny on our cross, and now we can make it a bookmark. I have a little heart here. I have crayons. I have glue. I have scissors. I have even a shoelace. Because you can make a necklace. You can make a bracelet. Here's my bracelet. See how I took some cord here and I took a little heart and I glued my penny to it. And you know what? I took a little, pe a little piece of straw and taped that to the back so it's easier to feed this through so it lays flat on the arm for a bracelet. And I even have colored pencils. And I have, I have a little cross in here and a safety pin that you can even decorate your cross and make a pin. So I will be so excited if you guys get to scavenger hunt around your house to see all the different things you might have that you can make something special with your penny that you can keep with you and wear to remind you that because Jesus lives in your heart, you are to what? tell about Jesus and that you are a missionary and you are one cent. And you know what? I can't wait for you to send in pictures of what you've made for your crafts. And even I look forward to the time that we get to meet together again in Sunday school. And you know what? I'm going to give you a special 
job. The first Sunday that we all get together to meet back in Sunday school, any one of you that brings any one of the crafts that you have been learning to make over all of the awesome teachers that have been teaching you, if you bring it to Sunday school that Sunday, I have a special prize for you because I'm so excited to see all the things you're doing. And maybe you'll come up with an idea that is really something special on how you can make something special with your penny. And I really want to see what your imaginations to come up with to remind us of what we need to do to share the love of Jesus that he had for us that we want to share for others. So until I see you again in person, have a blessed day, everybody. Wave bye-bye, everybody. Bye.